I turned this $200 Dell Exynos 13 into a MacBook Pro in one afternoon. Watch this video all the way through. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this, why somebody would want to do this, and how well it works. How I did this. Step 1. Finding the perfect model candidate laptop. Before I could even start, I had to find a target model laptop that would fit all of my must-have criteria for a Hackintosh laptop. Number 1. A nice 1080p IPS screen. The screen is one of the most important aspects of a laptop because it's something you interact with every day. Number two, an Intel ultra low voltage iCore CPU. I wanted something preferably fourth gen or newer because I wanted performance similar to MacBook Pro 13. Number three, a nice thin modern design that would look at home running Mac OS. And number four, it must be cheap. I didn't want to spend any more than 400 bucks because at that point you can buy real Mac hardware and it would make much more sense to do that. So what laptops actually fit all this criteria in the used market? There are a couple of other good choices out there like the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, but I settled on the XPS 13. The XPS 13 stood out to me because first of all, I'm very familiar with the XPS lineup. I've had an XPS 15 9570, 9560, an XPS 13 9350, and now a 9343, which was the first generation from Dell with this angular, sort of modern, thin bezel design. That, and the fact that it meets all my other criteria, makes it a perfect choice for this project. Now that I decided on the XPS 13, it was time to go out on the internet and find one. So I scoured through Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace to try and find a listing within my price range. I found a 9343 on the Facebook marketplace for only 200 bucks, which is a steal. The laptop had a minor dent in the corner of the lid, but that was purely aesthetic and had no impact on the functionality of the laptop. Additionally, I did notice that the laptop was running hot, so I opened it up and repasted it before continuing. Step 2. How I did this, making the Hackintosh USB. The second step in this project involves me making the macOS installer USB, which will let me install macOS Catalina onto the 9343. Since my desktop is also already a Hackintosh and runs macOS, this made my life a whole lot easier making this USB. So what steps do you actually take to make this USB? Essentially what I did was, I used my Hackintosh desktop, which at this point is another Mac, to download macOS Catalina off the App Store directly from Apple. After that, I used the create install media method to make the USB. This is a method provided by Apple to make installer USBs for real MacBooks. The next step was to install a bootloader to the USB. I chose Clover bootloader, as well as the necessary kecks and patches that are required to get this thing running on the 9343. If you want more detail regarding this process, check out the previous videos I've done on my channel. I've covered this in depth many times with an XPS 15. How I did this, step three, preparing the XPS 13, as well as installing Mac OS. After making the installer USB, I had to make some quick changes in the UEFI of the XPS 13 before we could continue. I booted into UEFI, turned off secure boot, as well as made a manual boot entry that would point directly to the Clover X64 EFI file. This is because oftentimes it doesn't automatically detect the Clover EFI entry. After doing that, I rebooted, hit F12, booted into the USB, then the Clover bootloader menu showed up. From here you can select macOS and the installer starts to boot. After booting into the installer, I went directly to disk utility, formatted my drive into APFS, and then installed macOS onto it. This part takes around 20 to 30 minutes, so I waited patiently for this to complete. Success! We've finally installed macOS Catalina. So a big question you may have now is how well does this thing actually work? I've been using it for a few days now and I can say that it works pretty well. Up to three finger multi-touch gestures work great on the touchpad with Voodoo I2C. The gestures are smooth and generally reliable and so is the mouse tracking and scrolling. Of course it's not quite as good as a real MacBook's trackpad but it's pretty damn close. I'd say maybe around 75% of the way there. And definitely better than Windows' gestures just because of the nature of macOS. Sound, CPU and GPU acceleration, power management, microphones, things like that all work, including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all of those things work as expected. Luckily, I didn't even have to swap out the original Wi-Fi card from this laptop, which is usually a thing you have to do with Hackintosh laptops. This is because the stock Wi-Fi card that the XPS 139343 comes with is a DW1560, and this is natively supported under macOS, as long as you do a little bit of patching. The only current issue I'm having right now is that the memory card isn't being detected, and I may be able to fix this in the future future with one of the Realtek memory card kecks that are existing out there. The 1080p IPS display looks brilliant on macOS, and this package as a whole in my opinion is far better than something like a MacBook Air from the used market around a 2017 with an Intel CPU, which would go at least double or triple the price what I paid for the XPS 13. If you need to run macOS specific apps like Final Cut Pro or Xcode on a particular budget, then this may be feasible. The only downside I could say for Hackintoshes is that, whilst they may be reliable, Performing updates can be very tricky and can be a mess at times. In my experience, they don't tend to stand up well to future macOS updates. I've seen my desktop go through macOS updates and take them with no issue, and other times be completely unbootable after the macOS update. So if you need to be on the latest and greatest macOS, then this sort of thing is definitely not for you. And if you can't be careful about updates or making backups, then for sure, this sort of thing is not for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Thanks and see you later.